Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Azure Stack series. Um, so this is, uh, again, we've been walking through different areas of Azure Stack, um, like the Azure Stack Hub, Edge, HCI, I can do an introduction to those. At the same time as doing the theory, we've been going through demos, and I, all I've been doing is going through my, my sandbox environment that I deployed with the deployment process as well of my Azure Stack HCI. So I've kind of deployed that in my in my environment as a sandbox, a virtualized sandbox, and just going through different configurations as, as I'm learning as well. So as, again, there's no kind of set demo pattern, just jumping into the portal, completing some tasks, integrating with Azure, you know, domain joining, that sort of cool stuff. Um, with an end game of hopefully wanting to deploy Azure Stack, uh, Azure Stack HCI with AVD and Azure Arc as well. Um, so let's get started with this episode. Uh, so this is part three of the introduction to Azure Stack HCI core technologies. Um, so I've kind of covered Hyper-V and Azure Stack HCI so far. In today's episode in part three, we're actually going to talk about what is uh, Windows Server Software Defined Storage and then we'll do a bit of a demo. So software defined storage is one of the foundational building blocks of your Azure Stack HCI. Unlike Hyper-V or sort of failover clustering, uh, software defined storage isn't an individual sort of server role or a feature. Instead, it consists of sort of different technologies that frequently complement each other. You can combine these technologies to implement uh, various storage virtualization scenarios such as guest clustering or, uh, you know, on HCI. Uh, these technologies include storage spaces, uh, clustered shared volumes or CSVs, server message block SMB, SMB multi-channel, SMB direct, uh, scale out of a file storage or, or softs, uh, storage spaces direct S2D, and storage replicas. We are going to be touching on some of these um, coming up. To use Azure Stack HCI in your proof of concept environment, you, you'll, you'll rely on most of these technologies. One of the primary benefits uh, of this approach is that it simplifies provisioning and accessing storage resources. So let's talk about storage spaces now, which we've just kind of mentioned. So a storage space is a storage virtualization capability uh, that Microsoft has built into Azure Stack HCI, uh, Windows Server and Windows 10. Uh, the storage spaces feature consists of two main components. You've got storage pools, which are a sort of collection of physical disks aggregated into logical disks uh, that you manage as a single entity. A storage book can contain physical disks of uh, physical disk of any type and size. Then after storage spaces, there are also virtual disks that you can create from sort of free space in your storage pool. And virtual disks are equivalent of, of so LUNs on, on a SAN for people on premises who know SANs. Let's talk about clustered shared volumes or CSVs. So CSV is a clustered file system that enables multiple nodes of a failover cluster to simultaneously read uh, from and right to that same set of storage volumes. The CSV uh, volumes map to subdirectories within the C clusters, uh, cluster storage directory on each cluster node. This mapping allows cluster nodes to access the same content through the same file system path, uh, while each sort of node can independently read from uh, and write to individual files on that given volume. Uh, and a single cluster node serves a special role of the windows of the CSV owner or coordinator of that volume. Finally, you have the option of assigning a volume to a specific owner. However, a failover cluster automatically distributes CSV ownership between cluster nodes. Oop, jumped ahead there. So I just want to go to a diagram of that CSV. So at the bottom, we've got our storage pool, then got our different volumes. So in here, we've got three volumes in this diagram. And then we've got, we talked about that C cluster storage volume uh, location. So again, we've got two file shares each associated with each volume. Let's talk about server message block uh, 3.x. So this is uh, the SMB protocol is a network file sharing protocol. Uh, it provides access to files over a traditional ethernet via TCP IP, uh, which is a transport protocol. SMB serves as one of the sort of core components of, as we mentioned, of software defined storage technologies. Uh, Microsoft introduced SMB version 3.0 in Windows Server 2012, 2012 and has been incrementally improving it subsequently in, in, in releases. Let's talk about storage spaces direct now. So storage spaces direct represents the evolution of storage spaces. It applies the storage spaces, failover clustering, CSVs, and SMB 3.x to implement virtualized, highly available cluster storage by using disks on each storage space direct cluster node. 
Um, it's suitable for hosting highly available workloads, uh, including VMs and SQL Server databases. And finally, it sort of eliminates the need for attaching storage devices, such as you know devices to multiple cluster nodes in sort of uh, failover clustering scenarios. A bit of a diagram that kind of again explains that. So again, at the bottom we've got our storage pool. So we've got our local disk drives and solid state drives at the bottom, so which make up our storage pool. Then we've got that storage bus, and that connects into the cluster which is where we have our, our servers and our ethernet and our DMA. But then above that, we have the next layer, which is our storage spaces. Uh, we're saying to integrate through the CSVs and the, you know, the cluster storage volumes as mentioned. And the top, that's where all our Hyper-V VMs are. And we're going to our Hyper-V OS. So coming towards the end of this topic before we get into the demo, so let's quickly talk about workload models. Uh, so there are two deployment models of Hyper-V workloads using storage spaces direct. Um, the first is disaggregated. So in a disaggregated model, uh, the Hyper-V hosts, or the compute in this case, uh, are in separate clusters from the storage space direct host, which is the storage. You can configure Hyper-V VMs to store their files in a storage cluster by relying uh, on SOFS or SOFS. And this allowing you to scale the Hyper-V uh, cluster, the compute aspect, uh, and the um, STD, S2D based cluster as well, which is storage um, independently. The other deployment model is hyperconverged. In the hyperconverged model, the clustered nodes operate as both Hyper-V hosts, the compute, and the storage space direct host, which is the storage. This deployment model has compute and storage um, co-located on the same set of cluster nodes. And to scale up a cluster, yeah, you need to increase the number of its nodes. Simple. So let's go into the demo now. Again, we are back. We're going to be back in the demo tenant, uh, going through my HCI uh, deployment uh, and integrating with the different Azure services. So let's jump now into the demo tenant. Welcome back. We are back in the Azure portal and we are back on this HCI box cluster because we're still we're still doing quite a bit of the setup. So the next thing I want you to look at is um, the VM images. So before we get into the the you know the different kit, these different sort of um, getting started on the Azure Auto Manage and AVD and Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I wanted to add some images. So just show you how we can actually add images for our virtual machines. Uh, so obviously we've got none. So we've got, got an option here. We can either do it from the Azure Marketplace, do it from an Azure storage account or from a local share. Um, so again, I, I want to do mine from an Azure Marketplace. <clears throat> so I'll just save the image as um, I am IT geek HCI dash image zero one for example a bit of a big name but who cares <laughs> um so custom location jump start that's fine so which image are we going to go for so do we want a server do we want a windows 10 i'm going to go for windows 10 because i do want to deploy um avd later on so i'm going to go for just going to go for a standard um scope without office so here we've got an option to for the storage path choose automatically so storage path with high, avail high availability is selected automatically or do we don't choose manually? Um, so here we can put in a selected short path if we want. I'm just going to leave it on automatic for the purposes of the demo. Um, any tags that you might want to create, finally review and create. So it's going to do the validation. Um, and once it's on the validation, it will then hopefully allow me to click on create. And then that'll be image. And then what we can do is we can have different sort of images. So we'll be able, I'll be able to add a server image. Uh, so this is a Windows 10 image. We could add a Windows 11 image if we wanted. <clears throat> and this is going to allow us to um, actually deploy the virtual machines, um, you know, deploy virtual machines to that image. So uh, once that's finished, uh, we can then, you know, do other images, as I said. Um, so there's there's obviously a lot more other features we can add on to this as well, a lot more services. For now, I just wanted to do, just showing you how to do the image um, and the sort of VM management. Um, so let this, I'm going to wait for this to finish and I'll come back in. Let's try and deploy a virtual machine. So we are back and uh, the reason I'm not, we're not going to deploy a virtual machine in this demo because I've just realized, I'm just reading into it and it actually does take quite a while to, to download the image to our cluster. Uh, so we've got to remember, I keep on forgetting that we're actually downloading to a technically a physical location. So, um, yeah, so this is actually going to complete. What I'll do is in the next demo, I'll show, show this complete and then we'll try and deploy some virtual machines um, using this image in the next demo. 
uh, so yeah that that's all we're going to do in this little demo it's a very very short demo just a couple of minutes just wanted to show how to do the vm task um, again try to keep these videos short and sweet i don't i don't want to overload i've got a lot more content to come on this whole topic of azure stack ACI, so i want to spread out the demos and we are going to get to some of the good abd stuff um, when we start covering that topic as well so thank you very much for everybody for watching thank you for your support keep on keep if you're not subscribed why not you know make sure you're subscribed um, you know, I'm trying to grow my channel, uh, so I do appreciate everybody's support and everyone's nice comments. Uh, so yeah, please do share my content as well. So thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.